Hey guys, hope everybody is doing well. Uh, so in today's video, we're going to build a under $400 PC. So you have quite an array of components, new, used, uh, everything in between for the most part. Um, but starting off, we have our Fantax P300 case. So it's a couple years old, uh, but it's brand new from Amazon. Uh, only cost me $60, so it was on sale from $80. And it's a really, really nice case, plenty of air ventilation, um, really nice budget PC case. So it'll fit ATX, MATX, um, micro ATX, I believe as well. It has two USB 3 ports at the top and everything you really need in a case uh, for pretty cheap. And then in terms of our other hardware, so in terms of new stuff, we have a 240 gig Kingston SSD. So that'll be our main boot drive, two sticks of Patriot uh, DDR3 1800 megahertz memory, giving us a total of 16 gigabytes. And then we have our Gamax 400 uh, deep cool cooler. So it's a four heat pipe setup. Should give us plenty of cooling for our i5 CPU. And then in terms of some of our used stuff, I have a 500 gig Western digital hard drive, just because we are limited in space with that Kingston SSD. I have a GTX 1050, uh, not a TI or anything like that. It's only a two gig model, but it should give us plenty of performance at 1080p and 60 FPS. We then also have our i5 4590 CPU. Um, which will uh, boost up to 3.7 gigahertz, put it in high performance mode in Windows, and it'll stay around 3.7. We also have a Wi-Fi uh, adapter for USB. This board does not have Wi-Fi. And then in terms of the board, we have an H87 micro ATX board from MSI, which should give us plenty of performance for our i5. So I'm now just gonna get everything ready on our motherboard. Um, so we'll put in the CPU, put on our uh, Gamax 400 cooler, and then put in our two sticks of DDR3 memory. And that'll set us up for the motherboard install into our case. Um, so just taking a quick look at the Gamax 400. So as you can see, we have the four heat pipe set up. Make sure you take off the remove before installation warning sticker. Um, but this should give us plenty of cooling on our i5. Not a lot of heat coming off of that guy. So it should be plenty good there. And we have our non-screw in, um, but just plastic inserts to actually hold this guy onto the motherboard. And then we also, with that cooler, have a clear uh, fan, but it does have some blue LEDs in there. I wouldn't say it's the cleanest looking design, but it will show blue and you won't really see those LEDs. Um, so it'll, it should look pretty good inside of the case. So there we go guys, pretty simple. Just got our two sticks of RAM in there. Actually gotta make sure this one clicks in. There we go. It's got our two sticks of RAM in there. Our CPU installed, thermal paste applied, and the cooler put on. So as you can see, all you have is the four pegs coming through the back of the board to hold the cooler on. Um, the fan clips for the fan, and then just plugged into the CPU fan header on the top of the board. So rather simple installation of those components. So we'll get the motherboard in and get everything else in there as well. So we'll get the hard drives in, graphics card in, and hook up our power supply. Quick look at our Fantex Eclipse P300 case. So they already pre-routed the USB 3 and the HD audio cables. Um, we have one uh, 120 millimeter uh, exhaust at the top. Um, it comes with one pre-installed fan at the back of the case, which is all we're really going to need. So I have the one in the front, and then I already installed another 120 at the front 
sorry, we have the one in the back pre-installed and I installed one at the front as well. Um, really clean design. In order to get the front out of here, all you have to do is push out from the inside. You have access to your front fans and the bottom hard drive cage. And then of course the inside, these are filtered. So you have the filtered inserts for the top and the bottom to keep any dust out. And then if we take a look, let's drop this guy down. If we take a look at the back of the case, plenty of room for cable management. They even include two straps in the back. Um, really nice headers up there. Uh, and a couple of actual, um, the Fantex proprietary um, RGB LED headers. Um, so you can use those to connect any LED strips that you may need. And then an SSD tray at the back. And one other thing to bring to your guys' attention, watch time from subscribers. So only 0.7% of people who watch my videos in the last 28 days are subscribed to the channel. So if you guys could subscribe, turn on notifications, that would be awesome, trying to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. So inside of our case, we already have some pre-installed standoffs, but they are for an ATX motherboard. So we're gonna have to move some of those around. We're gonna have to move this one down here, up to here. And then we're gonna have to move one of these two right here, and that will give us enough standoffs for our motherboard. And then I'll also install the back plate while I'm in here, um, and we should be good to go. There we go, we got our motherboard situated. We got all the standoffs in the right spot. We have our motherboard IO shield in there. And all I'm gonna do is tighten these down and go through connecting all of the IO panel stuff. So we'll hook up our USB 3, our HD audio, our front panel connectors and everything else. Um, and then we'll throw in our graphics card. So now we got everything in and cable managed. We got our fans plugged into system fan one and system fan two, USB three plugged in, HD audio, um, and our front panel connectors for our power switch and hard drive LEDs. And if we turn this bad boy over, really good cable management in this case. So super clean, really no cables at all without the, the power supply in there. So now what I'm gonna do is install our hard drive. So we have a couple of slide in and out hard drive bays in the front of the case. Um, so these will just, without any screws, just realistically um, integrate a hard drive into here. And then I will also, of course, use this slide mount for our SSD install. And we can install our SSD in here. So I'll go ahead and do that and then show you guys how it looks. So we have our rear SSD mounted with our SATA cable running over to the front of the case and onto the motherboard. And then, of course, we have our front HDD mounted in there with the toolless drive bay. Uh, SATA cable runs through the bottom of the case up and then again into the motherboard tray. And if we take a look inside, still very clean. So we have the SATA cables one on top of the other so you can't really see too much of that. So looking really good so far. I'm gonna throw the graphics card in here and we should be pretty much set to go outside of our power supply. And there we have it, the GTX 1050 is installed. It looks a little small in there, but it will have plenty of performance for 1080p 60 FPS gaming, especially in sort of the online multiplayer category of like Fortnite um, and those kinds of games. And I've tested the GTX 1050 plenty before. You can see that in my videos um, right at the top of the screen, used it in the HP 8300 SFF build, which turned out really well um, in some of my other builds. So check those out as well. And we have the final piece of our PC build. So we have a thermal take uh, 80 plus white uh, 430 watt power supply. So this should give us plenty of power for our GTX 1050 and our i5. And I'll get this installed, show you guys the final result. We'll turn this thing on. Uh, we'll try to play some games, see what kind of performance we see in apps like Cinebench, maybe throw an OCCT at it to see what temperatures are looking like. And that'll pretty much be it. And there we go, guys. Power supply in. Super clean cable management, again, in this case. So everything is in there. We have our front 
hard drive connected, SSD connected, everything power supply in. We'll turn the case over. Of course, you do have the ketchup and uh, mustard cables, but not too bad. Um, so we have 24 pin and our four pin CPU power, no power for the GTX 1050. So super clean, uh, simple design in here. And we're gonna do the first startup. We have the nice little accent light on the case, the blue light on the um, heatsink. Now if we just go onto our BIOS startup, hopefully be able to go into BIOS. So we are booting off of our Kingston SSD rather than our SATA WD 500 gig. Just gonna go to enter setup. And here we have the MSI um, BIOS. So we can see our CPU sitting at 30C. Um, any of the overclocking settings aren't gonna pertain to this particular build as we are just using an i5 4590, not a K series processor, so no overclocking but we are looking really, really good at 31 degrees. So we'll back out of here and we will boot into Windows. And then once we're booted, I will go into some Cinebench testing, see what kind of temps we see under load on our processor. So there we have it guys, our under $400 PC, actually $375 PC is done and working really, really well. Performance looks great in Cinebench. Our i5-4590 is staying really cool with our Deepcool Gamax 400 cooler. So I didn't get to game in this video, but I will definitely be gaming at both 1080p60 and trying out 1440p with this guy in my next video. So make sure to check that out. If you aren't already, subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on notifications, that way you can see when that video gets posted. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments below, any questions.